just leaving Nantwich after what 10 12 days, Fran? We've been moored up in and around Nantwich. <laughs> Nothing has been normal, has it, for us? We've had um, family come to stay for five days, which was the longest anybody's ever stayed on this boat. Bringing all their diseases with them. <laughs> viruses etc so we've had a stinking rotten cold each for the last few days I think we had a couple of meetings that we had to make and stuff to do but like it's just been not us being normal but no. we're being well I don't know are we ever normal? It's been all over the place hasn't it we've been in and out of town nearly every day we've been here yeah. we've walked so many miles going into the town of Nantwich which is a beautiful place a bit of video coming up in a minute and actually um, the walk into town is really lovely yeah, as well lovely we found before, a route yeah. through, through the park and uh, can't complain, it's been really good. But well, we um, just doing what five miles today. We've got four locks to get to the beautiful village of Audlem. Yeah, and it's a perfect spring day, isn't it? It's this wonderful. is to me, I know we say we like winter, but this is perfect cruising. The sun's only just shining, so it's not in your eyes, it's not glaring too no, much. Too bad. It's not hot, but it's just okay in our jackets like this, and it's just all the blossom is out. And today is one of those precious days. You can actually say spring is here today. It's arrived, isn't it? It has arrived indeed. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. The blossom is beautiful. Birds is singing. The grass is riz. The grass is riz. <laughs> but we still haven't seen. We're on the lookout as always this yeah. time of year. So the swallows and swifts. Well, try to say that when you've got your teeth in. Swallows and swifts, um, which we always think should be here by now, yeah. but. Apparently they should, any day, should be arriving. And we're listening out, the cuckoos are now in Spain. Um, so hopefully over this weekend they might arrive. Well, the two cuckoos you're following online are in Spain. I think yeah. there's already some been recorded here, yeah. hasn't there? So yeah, they have been in Desperate to hear the sound of a cuckoo. We haven't heard a cuckoo for years and years. But there's a little white flower growing. I've just seen some. If I find it again, I'll take some close-up pictures of it called Cuckoo Flower, Our Lady's Smock. And it's called cuckoo flower because it opens at the same time that the cuckoos arrive. So as I've seen that today, I'm optimistic. What do you think? No. Perhaps we need to get a wooden cuckoo clock. Oh no, can you imagine that? <laughs> anyway, Audlem is lovely and it's really nice. Now we're um, going back to places that we've been before. We couldn't actually look forward to going back we know what's there and there's a lovely little sweet shop there for you um, and there's an old uh, canal building that's been turned into a craft center and a little bit of a shop so it really is a lovely historic and pretty place and as much as it's nice to investigate new places sometimes it's nice to go back where you know isn't it and the shroppy fly pub which is right in the uh, canals on the canal side I think we've only ever been in there once. It's, that was pre-Covid, yeah. I think, wasn't it? Or just after Covid. But it's been closed every time we've been there. You know, new management or whatever taking over, so we've never... We haven't been in for many years, so we're looking forward to having a pint in there today. They've yeah. got a, a boat as, for the bar. It's, it's an iconic pub. Everybody knows the shoppy fly, but it does seem to change hands a lot. And yeah. half the time it's closed down, I don't quite know why because it's a prime spot for holiday boats and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And regular boats, which is for your beer. It's been so busy on the canals this week, hasn't it? It's yeah. the last 10 days or so. It has been really busy. And I think last weekend was the busiest I've ever seen any canal, ever. We must have had about <laughs> 25, 30 boats pass us. It was uh, Noticing the difference amazing. from being up on the Leeds Liverpool Canal, which isn't so much a through route. No. This is one of the main through routes yeah. to everywhere, isn't yeah. it? And uh, you can really see the difference. Uh, but it's lovely, really enjoy, really looking forward to this cruise. The beautiful town of Nantwich has been prosperous since Roman times because of its salt springs and until the 19th century was the largest supplier of salt in the country. The town was devastated by fire in 1583 but was rebuilt in the Tudor style and funded partly by money donated by Queen Elizabeth I. The 
wonderful church of St Mary is the focal point of Nantwich. Built from sandstone dates back to the 14th century but largely restored in 1885. and uh, gave us a nice smile and a friendly wave and they watch our channel apparently and why wouldn't you? <laughs> Big up your bad self. We've uh, re... Uh, what's the word? Instated? Launched. Re -launched. You wanted to say regurgitated <laughs> but that's not quite right. Re We've relaunched the podcast. We haven't done one for nearly two years. And uh, we just lost some momentum. It's a pity, really, because we got a, we had a pretty big um, listenership. But uh, we relaunched it last week. We did a, our first new podcast, and um, really enjoyed it, didn't we? It's uh, good fun. So if you're interested and you like podcasts, I'm sure you'll like this one. Uh, just search "Floating Our Boat" wherever it is you go to listen to your podcasts funny because we sit down and we don't plan it out terribly well do we we just have a few things that maybe we want to talk about but the next thing you know 45 minutes have gone and we haven't even started on the list that we wrote <laughs> but we do enjoy doing it don't we yeah so. we talk about things non-canal mostly don't we you know yeah. it's uh, a bit need a, need a bit of light into our lives so uh yeah if you're interested float in our boat wherever you get your podcasts Just up ahead is Hack Green secret nuclear bunker. Big signs all over the place to tell you there's a secret nuclear bunker. Yeah, not so secret anymore. So it was, uh, I think, it was built in the Second World War, was it? And then it was, re at the cost of many millions and millions, it was uh, redesigned for nuclear attacks. So then, what caused nuclear attacks? And we're all dead, devastated they can go and hide in a hole in the middle of the Shropshire countryside. <laughs> so there's signs all over the place saying where it is, it's just up here at Hack Green. No interest for us whatsoever, is there? So we're not, not really, it's not, no. As much as we are interested in the history of wars and stuff, we don't need to go and visit the bunker, do we? But I think the whole area, I read that the whole area around the locks was taken over by the army in the Second World War. Yeah, yeah, it? for moving. So, Personnel, yeah. etc. Yeah. yeah, so uh, yeah, Hack Green nuclear secret bunker. <laughs> Shh, don't yeah. tell anybody, don't tell them. Don't right? tell them. <laughs> <laughs>
The first two locks at Audlem, of which there are 15, are in a beautiful setting, so we thought you might like to enjoy a little bit of real-time footage from one lock to the other. That's the first two locks done. We're going to leave the other 13 for another day. We're going to fill up with water here and reverse back and moor up just in front of that blue boat. What is going on now, Francis? I've got 100 dandelion flowers. Look at those, aren't they beautiful? But they're not, I haven't picked them for their prettiness. We're going to have a go at dandelion honey. Um, and I know over the last few years, there's been a lot of talk about dandelion honey. We used to be beekeepers and make our own or harvest our own honey. Um, and I've seen some not very good practices from some beekeepers. So we tend not to buy it. Well, we don't buy it now. But I just thought I'd have a go at this this year. I found a recipe that doesn't need much cooking. And I needed two, uh, 100 flowers and I've got to... I'm just letting the insects crawl out of them at the moment because I don't want to boil any bugs. So I'm just leaving them on my pizza tray for the bugs to come out. And then I've got to boil them for 15 minutes in some water um, and then leave it overnight. And tomorrow I think I've got to add sugar, maybe some lemon juice. I'm not quite sure yet, but I'm just doing this first step. Mm. Dandelions are fabulous. They're a flower for me that just keeps giving.
it's like you can eat the leaves if this honey works we'll use it on our porridge i was just going to say what yeah. are we going to be using it for yeah maybe um maybe in cakes and stuff i don't know but for the sake of a bag of flour and a little bit a bag of sugar and a little bit of water i think it's worth having a go and then they're good for children, aren't they? You get the dandelion clocks. Rich, you like a dandelion clock. I love a dandelion clock, yeah. It's just the most amazing flower in that colour. So that's what's happening. So what have you got round your neck? You are <laughs> the Species oh, Recovery Trust. Yes, yeah. So I started following um, a botanist called Leif Busfeden back in the winter or last summer. And um, he recommended getting a little eyeglass for when you're going out looking at um, flowers, wildflowers. I used to pick them and bring them back and look at books for them. But I don't do that anymore. I take photographs. But sometimes now I'm getting more into it. You need to know what colour the anthers are and if they've got downy leaves or I don't know. So I've got my little, little eyeglass now and it comes with my own lanyard. So this is the result of my 15 minutes of boiling the dandelion flowers yesterday. Fortunately, we picked the dandelions on a sunny day, which you need to do. Today is grey and rainy, but that's fine. Um, so these were boiled for 15 minutes, soaked overnight, and I've squeezed them all the juice out through this bag. Did you boil them in the bag? Or did no, you no, boil I boiled them, them then strained yes. them. And right. if you haven't got, this is a jelly bag. If you haven't got one, you could just go through a piece of cotton or a piece of muslin and just squeeze everything out. But this actually, it smells like honey. It's amazing. I guess it's all the pollen in and the nectar of the flowers. So now I've just got equal quantities of your resulting liquid and sugar, I think I've got 240 grams, but whatever it works out to, equal quantities. And this is going to get simmered, slowly brought to the boil so the sugar doesn't burn, then simmered for 15 minutes to 30 minutes until it becomes a little bit syrupy. And apparently um, you can test it on a cold saucer, but as it, as it cools, it gets thicker. So we'll see. This is the first time for us. Um, I don't know if it's going to work, but... I'll tell you, it smells delicious and it's supposed to be good for your heart, good for your kidneys, good for your liver, um, lots of benefits from it. And for us, it just means that we know that no bees have been harmed and killed in the process. And so. I guess if you want to be really, um, what's the word, organic about it, you would use unprocessed sugar or organic sugar? It's supposed sugar? to be organic sugar, but we're in a tiny little village. <laughs> So the chance of getting organic sugar is um, zero. But if I'm going to make it again, if it works well, there are millions of dandelions everywhere at the moment. So I followed, obviously followed the foraging rule, which is only pick one in 20 of anything you pick. There's millions of dandelions. So if this works, I might make a few more jars and I might get some organic sugar. And um, yeah, we'll try. We'll let you know. Well, those of you who are ultra observant will notice that we've changed pans. So I've put the honey into this little pan um, because I wanted to sterilize the jars to put it in. Um, I don't know if it actually needs it, but it's always best to be safe. And this recipe is not my own. I pinched it from Vegan On Board. They don't live on a boat. They live in a camper van or a mobile home. And uh, But they have lots of lovely recipes. It's worth having a look at their website. So that's our first jar of dandelion honey. It's a bit hot. Excuse the mess because I'm making lunch. But um, it's the right colour. It's a little bit runny at the moment, but I think it's going to thicken up beautifully. We've both tasted it and it tastes delicious. And um, we eat lots of porridge in the morning and like uh, something sweet on there. So I think that's going to be a good alternative to processed syrup and um, and other honey. So yeah, we'll get some organic sugar, that'd be even better, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I only made one jar, that amount. I've got another one sterilised, that can wait. But... Uh, yeah, I think it's worth, if you're going to make it, I guess for the 15 minutes cooking, it's worth making 
three or four lots to save the power but that was boiling just another 15 minutes and it, it looks like it's going to be good so we'll see we're going in Thanks for watching and if you'd like to get our vlogs ad free and early before anybody else consider becoming a member through Patreon or YouTube or if you'd just like to buy us a cup of coffee go to Kofi floating our boat. See you next time. Mm -hmm.